What's up guys, Paul from the Sysadmin channel bringing you the best tips and tools for your Sysadmin journey. In this video, we're going to cover the steps needed to install Azure AD Connect and sync your user objects to Azure Active Directory. So if you've been following along, we previously installed Microsoft Exchange Server 2019 and configured everything for basic use. Typically, the next video in that series would have been setting up and configuring send and receive connectors, but to be honest with you, my ISP closed off port 25, so I literally cannot send anything out of that port. And I also think in this day and age, uh, most people are probably looking to migrate to the cloud anyway, so we're gonna switch gears and set up everything to eventually move to a hybrid cloud presence. So we're gonna start off by opening up PowerShell and making sure we have the ability to enable directory sync. And with our connection to MSOL already set, we'll go ahead and run the command get MSOL company information and select the directory synchronization enabled. Uh, mine is already set to true, but if, if your environment is showing false, uh, you'll simply need to run the command to get, I'm sorry, to set MSOL dersync enabled, specifying the enabled dersync parameter and set that to true. All right, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and close PowerShell. And the next thing we're gonna do is actually install the MSI. So I already have it downloaded, so I'm going to run that. Uh, the installation is pretty quick. It's just a couple of UAC prompts. And once that finally loads, we'll click on the I agree checkbox to continue. Next up, we have the option to use either the express settings or the customized settings. Me personally, I like to use the customized settings because I have accounts pre-created for each function that is going to be used. So it's nice to have a little control over that aspect. So here we're going to click on the customize and move forward. Typically for customized settings, I like to use pre-created accounts. So here's where I'll enter in that info. But if you wanted to specify a custom installation, use an existing SQL server or specify custom groups. Uh, you can do that here as well. For larger environments, I would suggest using a full-blown SQL Server to handle the capacity and resources you're sending its way. Um, I would also suggest keeping the SQL Server and AAD Connect Server on the same box. Uh, the reason for that being is because all of the data that changes is going to be local to the machine as opposed to sending it over the network to a different SQL Server. So I would definitely uh, recommend having it on the same box. Also, like I mentioned previously, I'm going to use the dedicated account for my install. So I'll check the checkbox here and go ahead and enter my credentials. And one thing to note here is that this is the account that's going to be setting up your database and it's going to show up as the export username. All right, next up, we have the option of which authentication method we want to use. Uh, typically, I go with password hash sync because it's able to authenticate in the cloud without sending any information back to my on-prem servers. Also, if your Azure AD Connect server kind of craps the bed, uh, users will still be able to sign in because their credential hashes will be synced to the cloud. So this would buy you some time to either rebuild, restore, or whatever you need to do to get that machine back online. Um, other options, and I'm looking at you, ADFS, I don't have this flexibility. So you most likely be woken up at three in the morning because some users in can't log in. Fun times. All right, but enough of the rants here. Um, so aside from that, we'll go ahead and enable SSO because it makes life easier for everybody. So once we got that, we'll go ahead and click next. All right, next up, we need to enter in our credentials for our global admin account. Uh, this will be used to confirm access to the tenant. So you'll definitely need to have that handy in order to complete the setup. I would also recommend using a break glass account for this so that it's not tied to your on-prem Active Directory. All right, and once that is done, we now have the ability to connect our on-prem domain to Azure Active Directory. Uh, to do that, we'll use the Active Directory directory type. And since I only have one domain slash forest in my environment, I'll go ahead and add that. And I've also mentioned in the past that I like to use pre-created accounts for the services that are needed to run. So I'll enter in my service account for my Azure, Azure Active Directory. Uh, one thing to note here is that people in the past typically like to use a domain admin account to assure that it gets all permissions, but we're gonna take it a step further and use a least privileged model and give it the minimum permissions that it requires to be fully functional. And at the end of this video, I'll go over implementing what that looks like and those exact permissions that are needed, as well as any typical or common errors that you might come across. So with that now entered, let's go ahead and move on. All right, next up, we have a list of Active Directory UPN suffixes, and we can see that I've already verified the top level domain. And I'm not worried about my subdomain because all of my accounts, user principal names are set to the sysadmin channel. 
So with that already verified, we'll go ahead and continue without matching all UPN suffixes to verify domains and click next. And here we have the option to either select which OUs get synced to Azure. I would recommend not syncing the entire domain. So we'll select the bottom portion. Um, I'm also going to select a specific subset of OU. So we'll select the home and we're going to unselect the computers and servers as well as um, any service accounts. So that way only shared mailboxes and users are synced. All right, with that now set, we can move on. All right, next up, we need to select how users should be identified in your on-prem directories. In my case, I only have one domain and one forest, so my users are represented only once, so I'll just leave the default here. But if you have multiple domains interlinking identities, you'll need to select the option that suits you best. Uh, moving down a little, we have the Azure AD portion. I would recommend letting Azure manage your source anchor for you. So what does this mean? Uh, it means that Azure will use an attribute to anchor your Azure identity to your on-prem identity. It's very, very important to note that this attribute can never change, ever. So a perfect example of this would be if you get married and change your name, your source anchor would remain the same if you let Azure manage it for you. Uh, by default, in new installs, Azure uses the MSDS consistency GUID as a source anchor, but I, would, I had already set this up, so it's using the object GUID. So we're going to stay with that. I was also not planning on doing a phase deployment, so we'll synchronize all users and groups. And just to be clear, this is all users and groups that are scoped to the OUs that we set in the OU and domain filtering portion. Next up for our optional features, we'll want to make sure that we select Exchange Hybrid Deployment because we definitely have an on-prem server. Uh, mail and app filtering, not so much. However, since we do plan on using SSPR, or self-service password reset, we'll definitely want to enable password right back. I do plan on making a video for that as well, so stay tuned. Um, but for now, I'm not really interested in group right back or extension attribute sync, but if we plan, if we change our minds in the future, uh, we can certainly come back here and enable it. Uh, but for now, hybrid exchange hybrid deployment, password has sync, and password right back are the only options that we'll move forward with at the moment. All right, next up to enable single sign-on, you'll need to enter in your domain admin credentials. Um, I've already done that in the background, so we can just move forward and click next here. All right, and now we're at the end of our configuration, so we have the option to start the sync immediately after it finishes the install. And right below that, we have the option of enabling staging mode. Um, staging mode is basically a test mode that will not actually sync on-prem attributes to the cloud. It will still go through the motions. If you check in the sync service manager, it'll still show the imports and exports. It's just not going to actually um, export anything. And with the installation finally completed, we can click exit. And since we enabled the SSO option, we're going to go to our domain controller and set up the GPOs that are needed for that. So here on my domain controller, I'm going to log into or I'm going to open up group policy. And without not open, we can click on a new GPO and name it AAD Connect SSO, just to give it something relevant. Um, you can apply this to the default domain policy, but it's in my case, I wanted to scope it to a smaller subset of users instead of applying it to the larger uh, default policy. All right, from here, we're going to go into user configurations, uh, policies, administrative templates. And then once that's open, we'll go into Windows components. And then from there, we're going to scroll down a little bit to the um, when Internet Explorer. And then from there, we'll go down to Internet Control Panel. And then once Internet Control Panel is open, we can move on to the security page. All right, with the security page now open, let's go ahead and open up Site to Zone Assignment List. We'll go ahead and click on Enable to enable the policy. And here I'm going to post in the description what the actual values are. But in short, it is going to be auto login .microsoft Azure AD SSO, And we're going to set that value to one. And then the other one is AADG windows.net.nsatc.net. And we're going to set that value to one as well. And once those values are set, we can go ahead and click OK to get it out of the settings portion of site to zone assignment list. And next on the list, we're going to actually enable the policy since we didn't apply it to the default domain policy. So I'm going to apply it to my home OU. 
Um, so we can just right click and enable policy there. And finally, just to confirm, we'll go ahead and open up the settings portion just so you can see what exactly that looks like again. All right, so with that now out of the way, so if you made it this far, um, you're in for a special treat because now we're gonna go over some common real world issues that you might encounter with Azure AD Connect. Uh, most issues are permissions related, so we'll go step by step on applying the permissions needed to fix those issues. And at this point, we've set up Azure AD Connect uh, we've synced the OUs, we've applied the group policies for single sign-on. And here, if you check, um, I have my users already synced and we have our good old trusty uh, Don Jones. I got the wifey and a couple of shared mailboxes that I'm gonna be using in a future video to migrate mailboxes to the cloud. So stay tuned for that as well. And if I head over to my homepage, we're currently getting the password sync, no recent synchronization. And really quick, if I open up AAD Connect uh, Sync Service, uh, and then we click on the connectors and then the domain. So we'll go ahead and click on that. Um, and if you look here, I've got a couple of export errors with the error permissions issue. Now, if I go ahead and click on that, um, we can see that they are in fact getting errors. So to fix that, we'll go ahead and open up Active Directory Users and Computers and apply the permissions needed to get rid of those errors. So with AD now open, I'm going to bring up the account that's used to connect Azure AD. So we'll start off by searching for the SVC AADC account. And if we look in the group memberships, we can see that it's currently part of the AAD Connect permissions group. And instead of adding the permissions to the individual account, I'm going to apply it to the group. That way, if we ever wanted to swap out the account, um, we can just basically add and remove the user to the group. Uh, this way it just makes for much easier administration. All right, now moving on to the permissions part. Since I wanted this applied to everyone, I'm gonna apply it to the root of the domain. That way it will trickle down to all directories. Uh, this will essentially future-proof the setup so that way if we create additional organizational units, the permissions will already be applied without having to do any additional steps. Again, this makes for much easier administration. All right, so from here, we're going to click on security. We're gonna to want to add the permissions needed. So we'll go ahead and click advanced. And then from here, we're going to select um, add so we can add the permissions that are needed and then select principal. And then here we're gonna enter in AAD connect permissions because that's the group that we want to apply the permissions to. So with that now set, we want to make sure that this applies to this object and all descending objects. And then once that is set, uh, we want to make sure that we write to all properties. So we'll go ahead and check that. And then we also want to make sure that we add the replicating directory changes and the replicating directory changes all. So we're going to have to scroll down basically uh, to the end of these permission sets. And then you should see it there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click those two check boxes there and then click OK. These permission sets here are what's going to fix the recent synchronization error. So we got to make sure that that is set up. All right, next up, we're going to add the descendant group objects. So we'll go ahead and do what we did before by adding the AAD connect permissions group. And then once that is set, we want to write all properties again. That way we make sure that um, the Azure AD Connect user account is able to write properties to groups. So immediately following that, we're going to want to add the descendant inet org person objects. Um, so we're going to do the same here by adding the group. Once that is done, we'll go ahead and select the dropdown to inet org person objects. And then we're going to want to add, I'm sorry, write all permissions again. All right, so bear with me, guys. We're gonna to have to add one more, and this time it's going to be the contacts. So we'll go ahead and select the group again. Click OK. We're gonna select the descendant contact objects. Write all properties, OK. And last but not least, we're going to add the descendant user object permissions. So we'll do the same thing, add the group here. Go ahead and um, click OK to that. And here on the dropdown, we're gonna scroll all the way down till, until we see descendant user objects. We're gonna write all properties just like we did before, but this time we're going to want to change password and set and reset password. That way we can use a self-service password reset when we set it up. All right, with those permissions now added, let's hop on PowerShell and manually kick off a sync cycle. Uh, to do that, we'll type in start 80 sync, sync cycle, policy type Delta. 
So once that runs successfully, we'll go ahead and go back into our synchronization, synchronization service manager. And now we'll verify that the errors have been resolved. So if I click, click on the updates link, it should show us the two accounts that were updated. All right. And if I go back to the office 365 admin center and refresh the page, uh, we should be seeing the green checkbox, which means that everything is now fully functional and operating without any issues. All right, guys, this is Paul with the SysAdmin channel, signing out.